So it's Dr. Minda again. We continue with the series of the arm. So what you can see in this image is the triceps brachii being inserted onto the olecranon uh, process. Then um, we go to the species, the species in the arm. So we have three species in the arm. The first piece is the quadrangular space. The second is the upper triangular space. And the third is the lower triangular space. Okay, now you need to look, this is your humerus. This is the long head of triceps. Humerus, long head of um, triceps. Okay, then this is your teres minor and this is your teres major. So those are the boundaries. So what are the boundaries of quadrangular space? Humerus, okay, long head of triceps, the lower, the teres major and teres minor above. Okay, long head of triceps laterally, um, the humerus, then uh, teres major, teres major, teres minor. Those are boundaries of quadrangular space. And this quadrangular space is at the surgical neck of the humerus. So what are the contents? Axillary nerve and posterior circumflex humeral vessels. Okay, so posterior aspect has long head of triceps anteriorly, the humerus, below teres major, above teres minor. Contents, axillary nerve, posterior circumflex humeral vessels. Then we go to the upper triangular space. It's formed by, a triangle has three parts. So teres minor above, teres major below, and you also have the long head of triceps. So those are the boundaries of upper triangular space. And it mainly contains circumflex capillar artery, which is a branch of subscapular artery. Then lastly, you have the lower triangular space formed by the humerus, the long head of triceps, and teres major. Humerus, long head of triceps, and teres major. And this is at the mid shaft of the radius. So it contains the radial nerve and profunda brachii artery at the radial groove. Lower triangular space contains radial nerve, profunda brachial artery at the radial groove. Quadrangular space is at the surgical neck, so axillary nerve and uh, posterior circumflex humeral. The upper triangular contains circumflex scapular artery. So which arteries are in the arm? So usually the axillary artery terminates at the inferior border of teres major. Uh, and at that point it continues as brachial artery. So brachial artery is the artery of the arm. It originates at the inferior border of teres major as a continuation of axillary artery. Then where does it terminate? At the elbow. This brachial artery divides into the lateral radial artery and medially the ulnar artery. So this is your uh, brachial artery originating from outer border, lower border of teres major, and then at the elbow it divides into um, at the elbow. Sorry, at the elbow it divides into radial and ulnar. So this is your radial. This is ulnar. So in this image, you're able to see the elbow anastomosis. So we can just discuss elbow anastomosis here. So this is your brachial artery. What are the branches of? We've done origin and termination. What are the branches of brachial artery? You have superior ulnar collateral, inferior ulnar collateral, then you have profunda brachii, which is a deep artery of the arm. Profunda means deep. Brachii is arm, so profunda brachii. And you also have muscular branches to the muscles and a nutrient artery to the humerus, to the bone. So muscular branches to the muscles, humeral nutrient artery, the deep artery of the arm of profunda brachii, and superior and inferior ulnar collateral arteries. Those are the branches of brachial artery. Usually this brachial artery has veins around, corresponding veins, brachial veins, which we call venae comitatis. They follow the brachial artery. Now, elbow anastomosis is just communication between uh, branches of the um, brachial artery and branches of the radial and ulnar artery. So you can see the superior ulnar collateral passing posterior to the medial epicondyle. Superior ulnar collateral passing posterior to the medial epicondyle. Okay. And inferior ulnar collateral passes anterior to the medial epicondyle. So this ulnar artery is giving branches going downwards are collateral arteries. Branches going upwards are recurrent arteries. So posterior ulnar recurrent passes posterior to the medial epicondyle to anastomose with superior ulnar collateral. Then anterior ulnar recurrent, a current means going upwards, will pass anteriorly to the medial epicondyle to anastomose with inferior ulnar collateral. Okay, so those are the um, vessels on the medial aspect. Laterally, 
your profunda breaker is giving two branches, an anterior branch passing anterior to lateral epicondyle and a posterior branch passing posterior to the lateral epicondyle. So this anterior branch, the radial collateral branch, will anastomose with radial recurrent, an ascending branch. Recurrent means ascending, is going upwards. So ascending branch of radial. So radial collateral of profunda brachii, anastomose with radial recurrent, anterior to the lateral epicondyle. And this posterior branch of profunda brachii will anastomose with recurrent interosseous from ulna. Now, this ulna is giving interosseous. Interosseous is dividing into anterior and posterior. This posterior is giving an interosseous recurrent. Posterior interosseous or dorsal interosseous gives post, uh, interosseous recurrent that goes upwards, passing posterior to the lateral epicondyle of humerus to anastomose with the descending branch of profunda brachii. So those, <clears throat> that's what forms the elbow anastomosis. Posterior to the medial epicondyle, superior ulnar collateral of brachial, and posterior ulnar recurrent of ulnar. Anterior to medial epicondyle, inferior ulnar collateral of brachial, and anterior ulnar recurrent of ulnar. Coming to the lateral side, anterior to the lateral epicondyle of humerus, you have radial collateral of profunda brachii and radial recurrent of radial artery. And posterior to the lateral epicondyle, you have the middle collateral or posterior a branch of profunda brachii, it's called middle collateral, anastomosing with interosseous recurrent from posterior interosseous that is coming from inter common interosseous of ulna. Ulna giving common interosseous, common interosseous divides into anterior and posterior, posterior gives interosseous recurrent that anastomosis posterior to the lateral epicondyle with the middle collateral from profunda brachii. So this just shows you the brachial artery with the veins around it. So this is your brachial artery. This is radial nerve. Brachial artery is here. It has given profunda brachii. So profunda brachii and radial nerve around the radial groove. Again, this is your radial um, um, brachial artery that is giving profunda brachii. Okay. This is your radial artery. Radial artery, ulnar artery, this is your brachial artery. So elbow anastomosis, we've talked about it in detail. We've said uh, from brachial artery, you have superior ulnar collateral and inferior ulnar collateral. From profunda brachii, you have the middle collateral and radial collateral. And from radial artery, you have your radial recurrent. And from ulnar artery, you have common interosseous that gives anterior and posterior interosseous. And from posterior interosseous, you have your interosseous recurrent. Ulnar artery is giving you posterior and anterior ulnar recurrent. So we have the deep veins of the upper limb, brachial veins. Where do they originate? When radial and um, ulnar veins unite, they form brachial vein. So the vein accompanying ulnar and radial arteries unite at the elbow to form brachial vein. Where does brachial vein terminate? At mid arm, it is joined by bacilli to form axillary vein. So that's termination. Mid arm. It's joined by basilic to form um, um, brachial vein is joined by basilic to form axillary vein. So which are the nerves of the arm? You have radial C5 to T1, median C6 to T1 or C5 to T1, ulnar nerve C7 to T1, musculocutaneous C5 to C7. So these are the nerves that are related to the humerus. We can ask you to name po points of the humerus that are of clinical relevance. So you have your surgical neck, where you have axillary nerve and circumflex humeral vessels, you have the radial groove with profunda brachii artery and radial nerve. You have the distal portion of the, of the bone, where you have brachial artery and median nerve as they enter cubital surface, the cubital fossa, that, that's at the supracondylar region. And then you have the medial epicondyle, where posterior to it, there's a groove for ulna. So you remember, posterior cord of brachial plexus is posterior to axillary artery, then lateral is lateral to it, and medial cord is medial to axillary artery. Mm -hmm. Musculocutaneous nerve comes from the lateral cord of brachial plexus. Usually it pierces coracobrachialis. It supplies muscles in the anterior compartment, biceps brachii, brachialis, and coracobrachialis. What's the termination of musculocutaneous? It continues, terminates by becoming lateral cutaneous nerve of forearm. So this is where it will innervate. 
So this is your uh, musculocutaneous. It will pierce coracobrachialis and innervate biceps brachii and brachialis, then terminate as lateral cutaneous or forearm at this region. So these are the muscular branches supplying biceps brachii and brachialis. Again, this is termination of musculocutaneous as lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm. The median nerve, what does it do? It supplies the flexors on the radial side of the forearm. Flexors on the radial side of the forearm. So it will travel with brachial artery. First, it's seen lateral to the brachial artery in the upper half of the arm. Lateral to brachial artery in upper half of the arm. Then it becomes medial to brachial artery in the lower half of the arm. Then after that, we see the median nerve in the cubital fossa superficially with brachial artery and it's usually deep to the bicipital aponeurosis so in the cubital fossa it's um, with brachial artery deep to bicipital aponeurosis that protects it from injury during venipuncture in the median uh, uh, cubital vein ulnar nerve supplies flexor muscles but on the ulnar side of the forearm so it will start in the anterior arm compartment and then you see it medial to the brachial artery but runs with the superior ulnar collateral artery to pass posterior to the medial epicondyle. So it will pierce the medial intermuscular septum, enter in the posterior compartment of the arm, then pass around the medial epicondyle. And then in the forearm, it passes between the two heads of flexor capi ulnaris, and that's what we call the cubital tunnel. So you have the ulna supplies the flexors in the ulna side of the forearm, starts an, in the anterior compartment of the arm. It's usually medial to the brachial artery, then runs with superior ulna collateral artery. Then we see it piercing the medial intermuscular septum, making it to enter the posterior compartment of the arm. Then it will pass around the medial epicondyle of the humerus and into the forearm. You see it between the two heads of flexor capi ulnaris muscle, and this is what we call the cubital tunnel. So this is your ulnar nerve behind the medial epicondyle. This is your ulnar nerve again. This is your um, flexor capi ulnaris. So ulnar nerve is entering between the two heads of flexor capi ulnaris. We go to radial nerve. We see it in the posterior. Remember, it is C5 to T1 from the posterior cord of brachial plexus. It then enters posterior compartment. Um, winds in the spiral groove of the humerus together with profunda brachii vessels. Just above the elbow, what does the radial nerve do? It pierces the intermuscular septum. Then it continues towards the cubital fossa. At the level of the elbow near the lateral epicondyle, what happens? The radial nerve now divides into superficial and deep branches. The superficial branch gives sensory to the hand, okay? The dorsum of the hand, three and a half portion and the deep branch of the radial nerve will enter the posterior compartment of the forearm okay so this is your radial nerve here okay this again is your radial nerve so you can see it divides into superficial and deep so deep is going to the posterior compartment of forearm superficial will just pass under brachioradialis then we see it in the anatomical snuff box so what are the branches of radial nerve we have cutaneous branch branches so cutaneous in the axilla it will give posterior cutaneous uh, branch of the arm nerve of the arm and muscular branches to the triceps then within the groove so it supplies long head and medial head in the axilla it gives branches to long head and medial head then in the spiral groove it will give cutaneous branches okay or that will supply the forearm and also muscular branches to the lateral and medial triceps and then corneas then within the arm it will give an articular branch to the elbow and muscular branches to brachialis brachioradialis extensor capa radialis longus so these are the branches of radial nerve so in the axilla it gives cutaneous branch of the arm and muscular branch to long head and medial head of triceps then when you come down to this at the spiral groove together with profunda brachii it will give cutaneous branch the lower lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm and posterior cutaneous um, arm of the uh, cutaneous nerve of the forearm then it will give muscular branches to the lateral head medial head and anconius then in the arm it will give an articular branch to the elbow joint and muscular branches to brachialis brachioradialis okay and extensor capi radialis longus so when you have 
um, next we'll discuss about the uh, 